So in this video, I am going to be providing you some tips on what to do to vet men, but I am also going to be providing you questions, questions that you need to be asking yourself and asking your partner, but more so asking yourself throughout the different phases of dating. I personally believe that good questions are what lead to great solutions and just an overall awesome life. In the early stages of dating, and when I say early stages, I mean when you've only been on a handful of dates together, or maybe you haven't even been on a date together yet. Maybe you've just been texting and calling one another consistently. In the early stages of dating, you want to avoid asking or answering the question, what traits do you admire or what traits are you attracted to or desire in a partner? And I know that it sounds a little counterintuitive to avoid asking that question or avoid answering that question because it's so commonly asked. But the reason that I am suggesting that you avoid asking or answering that question is because early on in relationships, that is really when we are so enamored with that other person and we want to please that other person and we want to be liked by the other person. And therefore, we can sometimes fall into this tendency of taking those traits that we either share or that we receive and trying to emulate and imitate those traits that may or may not actually be authentic to who we really are. Especially, my ladies, I want for you to let your man show you who he is instead of just telling you who he is. Let his actions speak for him instead of just his words. This especially applies to black women who are dating outside of their race, especially if you're dating a man who has never dated outside of his race before and you are his first encounter with dating outside of his race. You just want to be careful that you pay far more attention to what he does than what he says because he may think that he is prepared for a relationship with you, but he's really not. He just doesn't have the understanding. He doesn't have the equipment to be in a relationship with you in the way that you want and that you deserve. Now, I wanna be clear. I do think that you should speak about what you want from a relationship in the long term, such as do you wanna be married? Do you wanna have children? I do think that you should be very upfront about those things. And at the same time, I think that you should reserve speaking on the traits that you need or want in a partner to get you to the point where you are considering marriage or children. And also ladies, I really want to encourage you early on to not fall into the trap of overanalyzing and obsessing over whether or not the person that you're dating likes you. You need in the early stages to really prioritize how you you feel about that person. It is so easy, especially for women who are just like conditioned to be desirable, to be wanted, to be people pleasers. It is so easy for us to focus on all the things that we can do to get the man, to satisfy the man, to keep the man. But you really, especially in these opening stages of dating, you really need to focus on whether or not you really like him him. And lastly, ladies, in the early stages of dating, I just want you to focus on enjoying yourself and detaching yourself from any sort of outcomes or narratives that you may begin writing within your head. So many amazing relationships are ruined before they can even begin because we create these narratives and these stories in our heads and the other person is unable to live up to these expectations, to live up to these grandiose stories. And they could have actually have been a solid partner for you, but you weren't allowing them to be because you had this fixed image in your mind of how things would go and how these individuals would behave in those circumstances. So 
early stages, just enjoy yourself. Prioritize having fun. Prioritize getting to know that other person and come into this with an open mind, little to no expectations, and just a desire to have a great time. And again, it's so important early on to just let your partner be. Just let the man be who he is, and of course you be yourself as well, but just let him be and observe. Observe, observe, observe. The early stages is really just a matter of observation. Now, once you get to the next phase of dating, and when I say the next phase, I mean maybe you two are in a committed, exclusive relationship. Maybe you have met each other's friends, or maybe you've even met family members. The phase after dating, the phase after the initial round of dating, but the phase before marriage or even before engagement. So at this stage, you want to ask yourself a series of questions. You wanna take inventory on what is going on in your relationship. So at this point, are you two in a committed relationship? Are you in an exclusive relationship? Has he made it known that he is no longer pursuing any other women and you are no longer pursuing any other men? Have you met one another's friends? Have you met one another's family members? What is the status of your relationship at this point? And it's also really important that in this phase, what he tells you behind closed doors is what he demonstrates in the light, in the public. So for instance, let's say that he has told you at home that he has told all of his friends about you, all of his family members about you, that he's only said wonderful things about you. When you go with him somewhere and you run into his friends, do they know who you are? Have they actually heard of you? Are all of those things that he said to you when you two were alone reflected in your reality with him when you are in public? So in this phase, you really need to be paying attention to the level of consistency that he demonstrates in his words and in his actions. The next thing that you need to acquaint yourself with when it comes to this second stage of dating is you need to assess how does your partner live their life and is their lifestyle truly compatible with your lifestyle? Is there truly space for you in this person's life? And I want to be clear here, different people require and occupy a different amount of space in a relationship. There are couples who can date and live in different states. They can do the long distance thing. There are even married couples who do not live in the same home, who do not even live in the same state. And they can be perfectly happy because they are in solidarity and in alignment on that desire to maintain their space. And then there are couples who they need to be together to feel secure and to feel happy and confident in the relationship. They need to occupy intimate space with one another. So in this stage of dating, you need to be clear on what do you actually require and not what does social media tell you that you need or your family or your friends, but you. What do you need? What do you want? And does your partner actually have the bandwidth in their life to give you that? And last but not least, ladies, at this stage, at this stage, I need you to assess your intuition. Your intuition is your gift as a woman. That is your gem. That is your jewel. That is the essence, or at least a part of the essence of who you are. And with your intuition, I need you to ask yourself, how do you feel in your relationship at this stage? I want you to take a second and ask yourself, if the relationship stayed exactly as it is right now for the rest of our lives together, would I be okay with that? Would I be happy with that? Now, of course, that's not going to happen. People change. Circumstances change people. Circumstances just change in general. But if where you are, if this moment in time was just like crystallized and this was the rest of your life 
would that be okay to you? And I really want you in this situation, again, to lean into your intuition, to lean into your divine feminine, to lean away from your masculinity that wants you to overanalyze the situation, that wants to think about the tangibles in your relationship, the financial security that your partner can provide you, or the physical security that your partner can provide you. Those things are very, very important. But at this stage in the relationship, you're going to know whether or not your partner can provide you the tangibles. It's going to be clear to you through assessing their lifestyle, whether or not they can provide you the tangibles. So at this point, you have to assess deep down inside, is this what you want? Is this fulfilling to you? Is this satisfying to you? We talk a lot about women who stay in unfulfilling, unsatisfying relationships because of just love and all of the emotional entanglement and enmeshment that goes into certain relationships. But we don't talk enough about the relationships that are just as unfulfilling, if not more, where there is absolutely no emotional connection, no emotional spark. So just remember, ladies, the tangibles make life easier, but it is the love that makes life worth living. All right, everyone, I hope that you enjoyed today's video. And until next time, stay safe, be well, and I'll see you soon. Bye, everyone.